Hey, welcome back once again, CISSP Wannabees, 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 Wannabees. I'm Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day, where every single time I come at you, I come at you with two questions to help you as you continue to prep for your CISSP exam. So, without further ado, let's get into question number one. You are exploring intrusion detection system options, and one of your performance requirements is to minimize as much as possible the number of false positives that you will get. Based upon that specific criteria, which of the following intrusion detection types would you be most interested in deploying? Click on pause if you need to, give those answer choices a read. When you're ready, click on play again. We can talk it through. Your answer choices here really boil down to two basic flavors. You have behavior-based or anomaly-based, which are two synonyms for one another. And then you have knowledge-based or signature-based systems. Now, knowledge-based or signature-based systems are systems that have uh, data sets that define the specific evidence of a particular type of an event or of an attack. And those are less likely to produce false positives compared to an anomaly or behavior-based system. Anomaly or behavior-based systems are very prone to false positives, whereas um, knowledge-based systems or signature-based systems are not. Now, that's not to say you're not going to get some false positives with signature-based or knowledge-based systems, but uh, certainly a significantly smaller amount than you would anticipate with an anomaly-based system. All right, let's move on to question number two. I'm going to give you a bunch of answer choices, and what I want you to do is tell me which of them is an example of tunneling network traffic. There they are. Click on pause. Give it some thought. When you're ready, click play. We can talk it through. Okay. First answer choice is the right choice. NAT-T or NAT traversal. NAT traversal is a technique that allows you to, in essence, smuggle things through an address translator. If you have a type of traffic that is not translatable, of which there are many, one of the things that you can do is you can take it and encapsulate it, package it up inside something that is translatable. This is very commonly done with things like VPN traffic. So if you're going to do an IPsec VPN, say using the encapsulating security payload, which you in essence would have absent any NAT configuration, is you would have some data that then gets placed inside uh, it gets encrypted and placed inside an ESP header and that ESP header becomes payload of an IP packet and that IP packet's then routed out across the internet. The problem with that particular structure is that ESP, the encapsulating security payload, is not NATable. You cannot pass it through an address translator. So in order to pass it through an address translator, we actually have to put another layer of encapsulation around it. So you take your original data, encrypt it, put that inside an ESP header, make that ESP header the payload of a brand new UDP header, which then goes inside an IP header. And there may or may not be another layer of IP header in there too, depending upon how you're implementing that. But suffice to say, you're having, um, uh, you're tunneling data, typically an entire IP, actually it would be in case of an IPsec VPN, you're tunneling an entire IP packet um, by hiding it inside the payload of UDP, which goes inside another IP packet. And because the outer shell, if you will, is UDP um, uh, as payload of IP, that can be translated by an address translator. So you get this notion of traversal of a network address translator by something that would not be able to be translated by itself. So um, a lot of the VPN solutions that are out there that are based on ESP will oftentimes have to do this because there's so much NAT in the world. Um, just straight sending out ESP traffic uh, from, say, your notebook uh, oftentimes isn't going to work because you're going to pass through a NAT at some point on your way through the Internet, and you're going to have to smuggle that stuff through or tunnel it through in order to get it where it's going. Second option on here says masquerading. Masquerading is just another name for NAT, Network Address Translation. So uh, you are translating, you are not tunneling when you are doing Network Address Translation. So no. Uh, same thing for the third choice, PAT, Port Address Translation. Uh, sometimes you may see this referred as NAPT, Network Address and Port Translation, or just PAT, Port Address Translation. Most of us actually just call it NAT when we really mean PAT. But whether you're translating just the IP header or translating the uh, Layer 4 header in the form of TCP or UDP, as well as the IP address uh, in the IP header, 
you're still translating. You are not tunneling. Okay, so you're not taking an IP packet and making it the payload of another IP packet. You're actually just rewriting the headers when you're doing both uh, masquerading as well as PAT. Those are, again, those are basically synonyms for one another. Next option on here is SOX proxy, also not tunneling. With a SOX proxy, you're actually establishing a connection to the SOX proxy, sending the data to it, and then the SOX proxy establishes another connection uh, to the actual destination. So again, there is no tunneling of IP data um, in a SOX proxy configuration. The last option on the list, which is also not a correct answer for us, is stateless uh, NAT64. This is going in and dealing with the translation between IP version 6 packets and IP version 4 packets. Uh, this can be implemented in either a stateful or a stateless manner, um, depending upon how you choose to go in and configure it. But again, in both circumstances, whether it's stateful or stateless, you're actually going in and doing a translation of the headers, not at an actual encapsulation or a tunneling of IP packets. The, also, the only option on here that is correct is NAT-T, where you're actually taking an IP packet and making it the payload of another IP packet. All right, two more questions down. Hope you dug them. Click like if you did. See you tomorrow.